All right. There you go. Got it. I should know that. Awesome. I've been on Zoom too much. Yeah, man, I, I was going to say, didn't you have to take classes from a distance in your, your what would have been your freshman year? Yeah, yeah, all year. So I was, I was on Zoom from like 9 a.m. to like 12 or 1.30 every day uh, in Chicago. What's that like going to Harvard on Zoom? That must be like an experience. Yeah, no, it was it was interesting for sure. Um, not quite the experience that we get while we're here, but, you know, got some classes on, so that was nice. Yeah, and that surprised a lot of people. I'm actually not going to lie because that plays with your NCAA eligibility, right? Because everyone assumed last year was the freshman year because it was the first time you touched the ice for the Crimson, but turns out this year is your junior year. Yeah, yeah. So that definitely helped me, like, get get at least going with classes while I was here. And I think eased my transition a little bit as well. And then, you know, it's obviously – Good to be ahead in classes and, and be in a good spot with school yeah well I mean you know I'm, I'm gonna get to the hockey stuff in a sec but like uh, how's school man how's it I, you know I've, I've been around uh, in the U.S. you know to various colleges I've, I've, I've been and spoken to a bunch of students before um, but you know going to Harvard is a, is a different beast I find those those kind of Ivy League schools. So how have you been able to find a, a balance, you know, with school and sport? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge, I think. I mean, I, I've been lucky enough to have so many great teammates around me that have helped kind of introduce me to the school uh, right when I got in. Uh, and then I think just the guys in my class helped me so much as well. I think going through the same thing with those guys every day for the past three years has been amazing you know even over zoom we're always there to help each other so I think it's it's really been a, a group effort and um we just try to keep keep each other motivated both you know in school and in hockey yeah I mean that you need it man you need you need that core group because I, I if I didn't have mine I wouldn't have gone through school so I feel you okay, for sure um so look I just wanted to get a few a uh, few minutes of your time just to go over some some of the hockey over the yeah. last six months um, I know, for example, that development camp uh, in the summer was your first time around the Montreal Canadiens in Montreal. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I've been to Montreal when I was a kid, it's probably yeah. like eight or so, but I, I didn't remember it at all. So it was, it was awesome to be back, especially since it was the first time um, since I've been drafted. So um, it, was, it was cool to finally get out there. It seemed like it was a long time coming. Yeah, man, and we we spoke to a lot of the a lot of other prospects uh, that attended the the camp. I mean, uh, Philip Meshar and and Owen Beck still rant and rave about your performance at that at the camp and and just how loud they were from you. I just wanted to know, like, what did you take from from that camp? Because everybody kind of seemed to have a little bit of a different answer. But being one of the mature, more mature players at that camp, I just wanted to get your take. Yeah, I think um, for me, the biggest thing was just trying to meet a bunch of new people and learn as much as I could about, you know, the organization and um, kind of what they expect out of us as players. Um, I think, um, you know, it was, it was my first time meeting all those guys in person. Um, obviously, it's great to meet a bunch of other other players and the kind of same path that I'm on, um, going through the same, same type of stuff in different leagues, different countries, whatnot. But uh, we all have the same goals, so it's cool to to learn from those guys and, and talk to those guys. And I think um, you know uh, Adam Nicholas is there as well, and you know I work with him the summers uh, a little bit for the past few years. So that was really cool to um, be able to be there with him and and take stuff from him there um, a little bit different than you know what we do at home. I was actually going to speak to you about Adam Nicholas tonight, uh, specifically because you know being part of the developmental team with the Canadians, but because, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this relationship goes back to the Chicago Steel days, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think he he helped us a lot in Chicago, um, my first year there, and then even more so the second year, the the COVID year. So, um, and then him being you know around Maine, he came up to Massachusetts a ton uh, during that summer. Um, there was really like nowhere nowhere to skate, so uh, we got a pretty good group together of of college guys and we all skated with Adam like a couple times a week and and that was so awesome so uh, I think I learned a bunch that summer and then um when we were in Chicago as well um he's you know so accessible and 
always willing to help. And I think, you know, his skill sessions, you know, emulate games so well. So uh, I think just taking some of those little things that he teaches in small areas and bringing it out onto the ice in real games has, has helped me a ton. Yeah. And I mean, it's going to, you know, the Canadians haven't had a, a, a focused developmental department before. So it's going to be uh, pretty interesting. He had a, a press conference about three weeks ago with the Montreal media. And I, I swear we could have sat there with him for four hours and listened yeah, to him. Yeah, for sure. He's uh, really knowledgeable. So I could just imagine on the ice one on one what that would be like. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, we talk about improving your game, uh, you know, this is kind of a cliche that we ask prospects, but it, it needs to be done, obviously. Um, you know, is there an aspect of your game that you felt that you've worked hard on this, this summer and that you've improved on leading into this season? Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing was just kind of getting stronger, getting better on my edges. Um, I think uh, I kind of learned through playing at Worlds and at the Olympics that uh, you, you got to be stronger on pucks and, and, and it's hard to escape those bigger guys down low. So um, I think, you know, a mix of, of working hard in the gym and then also like working on those, those down low plays and down low situations was, was something that I focused on. Yeah, and I remember watching the World Juniors, I specifically, uh, sorry, the Worlds, uh, and there was this specific play I believe it was an overtime where you you managed to steal the puck, but we're about to get crunched on the boards and you pass the puck to like Luke Hughes, who was yeah. jetting off like a rocket and he scored that OT goal. I think and it, I always remember that because it's it, it, it's always about like managing those spaces quicker. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So I definitely understand that. And then obviously you're going into what is an important year, um, you know, this is theoretically like we spoke before the the junior year. So, you know, Harvard last year that that I would say that heartbreaking game because that was a wild last game that you guys played there. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of guys that that went on, but you have yourself. Uh, I know that uh, Matthew Coronado is still around as well. So, you know, a lot of that young core that transitioned from Chicago to to Harvard is still there. So, you know, what do you think? would look good for you what would be a goal for you uh this season what would if you were to check everything everything off your box of things to do this year what would you have yeah I think um for us last year um you know with with the team that we had we had a lot of good players but we were really young so um we we weren't very consistent throughout the year so I think you know this year our, our goals are you know the same as last year but um, we can't be like dropping games during the middle of the season. So uh, I think for us, we, we have the team and we have the skill to do it, but um, we just have to bring it, bring it every night this year. And I think, you know, that'll help us be able to, to get in the national tournament, uh, maybe at a higher seed and uh, not have to come in at, at 15 and, and play a team that's really, really hot and, and yeah. has, you know, a bunch of, bunch of really good older players. So I think, um, biggest thing is just taking it game by game and then setting us up for success in, in the ECAC tournament as well as the national tournament. Big time. And I think that that that's the key, right? Is it's those divisional tournaments right before and, yeah. and just being able to, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a conversation I've had with a lot of players, even those in, in hockey East and big 10, like it's, it's, it's a really tough experience. So, you know, it, it, you, you speak about being that 15th seed, but again, in that game, like that was a tight game. That was not, the, your regular like type and you know setting so I, i'm i'm very cautiously optimistic just like you guys are and obviously that season starts this this weekend right friday yeah. if i'm not mistaken there yeah. you go because there were there were a few games last weekend and fans got excited because yeah, you know, yeah. hey they're points but like they're, it's exhibition guys yeah exactly um so on that, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of fans, obviously, when when it comes to NCAA players, a lot of fans are, are following. But there's always the question of, you know, do they feel like jumping to pro? Is that on their mind? And obviously, watching you play against NHL talent at the World Championships kind of like really brings that to the to, to the front because you were a dangerous player for the U.S. at the Olympics. You were equally as involved. Uh, at the world championships, you look like you belonged. So, you know, there's one thing about projecting and there's another thing about where you believe you're at. And so how close do you feel you are to the being ready for the pro game? 
yeah, I think um, uh, like mentally and, and my hockey sense is, is definitely there. Uh, I feel like through the worlds and, and at the Olympics, uh, you know, I realized I could make plays um, at that fast pace and, and process the game at that level. And I think um, throughout this year at Harvard, obviously I still need to improve and, and get better every day. Um, but uh, hopefully, you know, my work over the summer, um, you know, just being able to uh, hang on to pucks a little bit more will will come to fruition. And then, um, you know, hopefully I'll be ready to, to make the jump sometime soon here. But um, obviously just got to focus on this year and, and having a good year uh, at Harvard first. first and yeah, no, I, that's the that's, you know, that's the conversation we've had with the uh, with a few uh a few of the, the members of the Canadians right now uh, abroad in, in the U.S. playing in the NCAA. I actually just had a conversation with a guy you'll probably be playing a few times, probably at the Bean Pot uh, as well. In uh, and Jaden Struble from Northeastern, kind of you know he's in his senior year. It's kind of a different fit, but there's always that question, you know, like will they will they jump pro? And I remember at one point, uh, you know, shortly after you were drafted, you know, you had said, you know, if if, if I had a contract in front of me, like I'd, I'd sign it type thing. Um, this is when, you know, Mark Bergevin was still a GM. Um, how has the relationship with the Montreal Canadiens been with this new management team? Like, is the fact that perhaps they brought in a guy like Adam Nicholas make it even more enticing because there's familiarity there? Or is it just, you know, business um, as usual? Oh, yeah, I think uh, everything everything that they've done um, has, has been awesome. And I think kind of kind of saw that for myself at camp you know how how opening and how you know welcoming everyone was um so um you know it was great great to meet everyone there from management to coaches to you know the player development guys um which you know I've been a little bit familiar with um but meeting everyone person's a little bit different um so uh, I think uh I'm really happy with with where they're at right now and um it's it's been good to to get to know them even more. And I think um, having that opportunity to be in person in the summer helped a ton. And have you followed them at all uh, over this last little bit, uh, end of last year or any time this year? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think um, last year, uh, especially when uh, Jordan Harris was up, uh, I liked watching him play. He's, you know, grew up around the same area, uh, like played for the same youth team a, a year later than me. So, um, obviously like to follow his career. And then I think uh, this year I'll try to watch whenever I can. It's, it's hard with my schedule at school, but. Um, no you know, complaints here. I feel you, man. Yeah. I'm surprised you have a social life at all. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's always fun to, to throw on games and, and watch whenever we can. Uh, like everyone, everyone in my class loves to watch hockey. So um, if we have a free night, we'll just, we'll throw some games on the TV and, and try to watch whatever's on. Got to got to go pick those nights where Montreal plays Boston and just kind of be like, yeah, right. <laughs> those are hockey nights. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask though, like one of the things that we've been looking at is kind of the push towards playing a more offensive game with the Canadians. And a lot of that has come with Martin St. Louis as head coach. Um, I just wanted to get your take on, on, you know, if that shift in, in mentality, this new approach that Kent Hughes and the team are bringing in, how that kind of affects how you see yourself within that system? Like, is it more enticing than it, what, it, what it was already before? Is that something that, you know, you could feel yourself integrating into easier now that it's more acts towards a player of your skill? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think they, you know, emphasize playing fast and, and playing a skill game, a uh, possession game. And that's always something that I've been good at and su succeeded in systems like that. So, um, you know, I feel like, once I'm ready and, and my body's ready, I feel like I'll be able to step in and, and hopefully help the, the team offensively. Um, I think definitely seen uh, flashes from them this year where they where they're scoring a bunch of goals and play well in the rush. So, um, you know, they're really fun to watch and, and hopefully I'll be able to, to step into that someday. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there was one of the things that you said before that kind of stuck with me is, is you, you know, the fact that you, you were familiar with, with Jordan Harris in, in youth hockey. Uh, I believe that Kent Hughes with, was, gen, uh, was Jordan Harris's youth hockey coach uh, in his time. Have you ever crossed paths with him in, in hockey at all before he became GM? Um, 
not not directly, but uh, I always always knew his his two kids. Uh, skated with them in the summer sometimes. So um, you know we were familiar with each other for sure. Um, uh, Might have ca- crossed paths a couple of times, but uh, it's it's good to to finally be able to like meet him in person at at the camp and you know have some different conversations. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's cool that you know he's a guy that's that's grown up around around the same area as me and. His kids have played, um, you know, uh, maybe a year up or, or year down for me. I think the age gap is, but, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely cool to to have a guy that's that's been in the area and is kind of kind of familiar with my game a little bit as well. Yeah, I mean, it's the joke that we're making is that hockey. He's out for hockey East right now yeah. in the ECAC because like he's just brought in everybody. Him and obviously uh, former Boston Bruins general manager. Uh, in the process as well. So there's a lot of hockey East and ECAC connections going on with the Habs right now. And, you know, it, it kind of opens up the conversation. And I guess some of the things that we've looked at is is kind of how he's bringing in this, this new style. And a lot of it is is being played right now in the, in the university ranks. You, you, we can, I know you were familiar and, and met him, Lane Hudson, who's playing at Boston University, who you'll get the chance to play. Like, again, that kind of style that they're looking for. Um, there is one player who is playing in the NCAA for the first time and is lighting it up. And I know he's been a former teammate of yours is Adam Fantilli. Yeah. And, you know, um, Montreal is an exciting team, young team, but there could still be more pain on the horizon before they start getting better. And one of the players that fans are excited about, you know, even the possibility of drafting is a guy like Adam. Uh, and I know, you know, you've had the chance I believe one season with him was yeah. it, or the tail end of one and a, and another full one. If I, oh, just, just, I know his brother. Yeah. One, just one, one okay. full season. Yeah. And then you know, his brother was on the team as well. So I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to run it by you. Just, you know, what would you, what were your impressions of Adam as a player? Uh, you know, if we were just talking about him, you know, in a hockey chat. Yeah, I think um, obviously he's, he's a really big mature kid. Um, he came in the USHL as a, he's 15, 16 years old. And yeah. um, like, he's, he's one of the stronger, faster guys out there with, you know, a really hard shot. Um, and I think uh, he, he just continued to get better um, throughout the year for us. Um, at the end of the year, I ended up playing a line with him and, and Josh Stone for probably a month or so. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a guy that's really fun to play with um, just because of his speed and his finishing ability. Like he's, you know, someone that, I knew if I got the puck to him in a good area that he'd finish. So um, he's definitely a really excited player and, um, you know, really look forward to following him this year at Michigan. He's already off to a crazy start, obviously. Yeah. Record breaking, man. We were like, could he possibly be better than Eichel? And he's like well above Eichel at this point. Like, so, you know, we're all, all our, all our jaws are dropped right now. And it's basically just become this conversation of, well, is he going to catch up to like Connor Bedard? Is this going to be another like three man race with with Matvey Mitchkov and oof? So basically, with with the you know the the all the young players that the Canadians are bringing in, there's there's been a lot of this talk. Um, we also had about a couple of fan questions, uh, you know, because they all get excited when there's prospects that we don't necessarily get access to on a regular. Uh, and one of the uh, one of our fans wanted to know when you were in Montreal, did you get a chance to taste? a lot of the uh, the local dishes uh, in the city and specifically what's your take on Putin if you had? Uh, no, I actually didn't, didn't get into the actual city at all. We were in Brassard the whole time. The so, whole time. Yeah. Um, no authentic uh, Montreal dishes. I would say um, we got, we went to a sushi spot uh, a couple of times. That was that was really good in Brassard, but um, didn't didn't venture into the city at all. That's fair. I mean, you were there for what four days, five days? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a quick trip. Yeah, I mean, those limitations with the NCAA don't make it easy on you. But <laughs> uh, I remember when Cole Caulfield got uh, had his first uh, development camp. He said the same thing. He's like, I just can't wait to like have a full open week where I could just yeah. hit the town. Yeah, and. The other one, the other thing I wanted to get uh, or that we wanted to know was, you know, at development camp, um, you know, some NHL arenas were less full than the development camps rafters on the side full of fans. 
how did that how did that impact you like how did you feel having that many eyes on just drills and scrimmages yeah it was really cool i think obviously hear how passionate fans in montreal are and um like and see how crazy it is on on tv but um to witness in person is a, a completely different thing um it was it was pretty awesome just to have you know that type of support and, and that many people in the building for scrimmages and, and practices um so yeah it was it was really really great introduction of the fans of montreal and and uh, you know when when you're on the ice it's it's something you know completely out of this world there, there was um your eyes, Slavkovsky scored his first goal last week yeah. and the bell center, basically the roof blew off and yeah. everyone was freaking out. And he was even telling other players to fuck off in the meantime yeah. and fans didn't care. Like it, that's why I'm saying it's sometimes it's bananas here. Um, and some fans, like I said, they, there are some players, like I said, just love that energy, love that pressure. And, and some prefer like the calm. And so I, I wanted to get your take, like, how do you, or they wanted to get your take. I apologize. How do you handle that pressure? How do you how do you turn that kind of weight because of you know your own goals, people watching? How do you turn that into positive energy? Yeah, I think um, you know every every everyone kind of needs pressure. It's it's definitely can be a good thing if you channel it the right way. Um, I think it's it's good to have expectations, and everyone should have expectations of of themselves and. Um, I think playing an environment like that helps helps you to kind of focus and um, make sure that that you're doing your best to meet those expectations because obviously um, fans will have have those same expectations as well. So um, I think it, it'd be really awesome to you know be in front of that many people. Um, I think uh, haven't haven't really been in a building. Um, that large, I think the biggest one I played in was probably in Finland, which was only about like 5,000 yeah. and that was rocking. So, I uh, really, you know, can't wait to, to someday be able to play in front of, you know, that many people that are that passionate about hockey. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm going to say this right now, uh, man to man, those European leagues in like Finland and Sweden are loud and rowdy, man. Like, oh, yeah. I wish we, yeah. we could have that environment, <laughs> like in North America in general, yeah, cool. but Montreal, when when you're winning or when you're when you're putting on the effort or when you're showing the skill, uh, those cheers are ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, last thing you wanted to, you had mentioned it before, like you're being physically ready, working on your body, making sure you're you're at the you know the peak of what you need to be to be able to withstand the grind. Uh, when you were drafted, there were there were you know concerns about your physical readiness and you've worked on that a lot over the last couple of years fans were curious because you know weight and and height is always all over the place in, in the nhl where are you at in terms of, of weight um i'm about like 175 now yeah in that range yeah probably a little bit heavier coming in the year and then you know lose a bunch You'll of weight it. Game for, exactly for two hours a day uh during training camp so yeah, I think um, happy where I'm at. I think I, I had a really good summer and I'm finally ready to get the season going on Friday. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty healthy range already. I mean, geez, I'm like 5'7", 150. And like yeah. if I hit 160, I'd lose all speed, right? So yeah. I feel you. Um, well, look, I think uh, I think I've taken up a much, an, enough of your precious time today. Um, I just wanted to leave you with uh, one takeaway question and I think we're good to go. Um, if there was one player you can compare your style to in the NHL, who would it be? Um, uh, I like to say Clayton Keller in, in Arizona. Um, I think underrated. You know, yeah. He's, he's, you know, really good with the puck. Um, it's kind of, kind of a slippery player. Um, and I think, you know, a, a ton of people don't really know his game because he plays in Arizona, but, um, he's just an incredible playmaker and um, someone that, you know, I, I like to just watch shifts of whenever I can. Um, I think he's, he's another smaller guy that, that came out of college. And um, so I think for me, that's, that's someone that I look up to and, and try to watch and emulate whenever I can. Yeah, man, that puck, I, I'm telling you, it's like glue on his stick. We, Arizona was here last week and Again, it's like the superstar amongst the sea of, of men. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. But, to uh, no, 
I definitely agree. Well, look, uh, thank you so much for taking the time today, Sean. Uh, I just wanted to wish you a really good success this season. And thank you. Hopefully, uh, like I said, I, I'm rooting for you guys. I'd love to see a, a deep playoff run for you yep. and uh, potentially even a, a division title. Thank you. Well, you have yourself a great night, man. Thank you again. You too. Thanks for having me.